Good morning, folks. No need for coffee if you're just lifting the eyelids here. You'll be awake at the end of this one. We've got Earth events, incoming comet, Mars science, and a shocking coincidence that I'm sure is no coincidence at all. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours brought much of the same quiet. We are now 11 days from Earth's southernmost point in orbit around the Sun. Nice view of the polar coronal hole down there. Solar wind intensity in geospace is dropping out slowly. Phi angle up top in blue, very steady. KP index in the zeros, ones, and twos. Two quick weather notes here. The cyclones north of Australia have islands north of them, of course. They are taking the convergence lines and lots and lots of flooding. For those waiting for the cold snap in the United States, for us in Colorado, it begins today and tonight as that bend on the jet stream is already freight training southward. We'll then sweep eastward to bring the cold snap I'm sure your local weather birds have been chirping about. Someone asked about Comet Atlas yesterday in the comments, and I realized it's been four years since we noted its discovery. It is much like Comet Elenin in its coming in from afar, also like Ison and Siding Spring, if you'll recall. There is not much scary about this one as it will miss all the planets and the sun by tens of millions of miles, and unlike Elenin, it is not coming in on the equator of the solar system, but has a much more inclined orbit. It does cross the solar system equator near perihelion on May 31st of this year. Folks, this confirmational study has been awaited anxiously by many ever since NASA first announced in 2013. They suspected whale beachings were related to solar storms correlations are even better than they imagined. They describe it as a similar magnetonavigational interference to the radio blackouts that occur with solar flares. When those ionize the top of the atmosphere, certain radio comms are impossible, and it turns out it's a similar sensory interference with the whale's ability to monitor Earth's magnetic field in strong storm condition, leading to their beachings. Top marks for this group. Up next, they have a great summary of the Mars discoveries by InSight, and it has been an incredible year. One of my favorites was how Mars seismicity was surging, and they couldn't figure out why. We had suggested that perhaps it's undergoing a magnetic change, just like Earth is, given the electromagnetic pre-seismic anomalies identified in the journals for this planet. But the most important discovery came yesterday, and it was that Mars crustal magnetism is 10 times stronger than they thought it was. This is big news, not only because it changes the habitability profile of various parts of the red planet, but because the explanation of how that field is so strong, and how it stays that way, is basically the Mars version of the solar climate forcing pathway through the atmosphere that has been stiff-armed out of earthly climate science for 40 years. Electrodynamic coupling from space to the surface. Of course, there is always the possibility that they were not 10 times off in the field strength, and Mars magnetism is actually changing rapidly as we had suggested, which would also explain the earthquake mystery. By the way, that's not the coincidence we mentioned at the beginning, we'll be coming back to that in a minute. This is just a fun thought, and also a good moment to mention that we have officially split up the massive 44 episode catastrophe playlist into the original 2019 series from last year. It has all 23 of those episodes. and. That is going to be complementing the primary playlist now. It starts with the full movie, and then moves through all of those follow-up episodes, including these signs at the other planets and nearby stars, all telling the same horrifying timeline for our solar system. By the way, all of our movies and a lot more can be found on our website homepage for free, and this allows me to mention how incredible all of you are. I brag about the community all the time, and for good reason, because this right here, Raise the Standard, that's pretty much what we do. For example, last night a diligent observer who took the time to dig deeper into the magnetic field changes and the motion of the magnetic poles noticed something I've never noticed before and it's an absolute shame on the NOAA and Cyrus teams in charge of this data for not instantly recognizing what it was. Discovery was made by a name I'd utterly butcher. It's in the bottom left. His channel contains auroral shots too. Is linked below so we can thank him. He indeed noticed that the current motion of the North Magnetic Pole, from random walk to excursion track, indeed happened in one year. And that year was 1859. The year of the great Carrington event super solar storm. Folks, we've shown all of the evidence that if modern day regular solar storms can affect the electrical currents in the mantle, which is not disputed, then the major blast can go deeper and can affect the core, inflict geomagnetic jerks, 
and I think the questions about the sun's control over Earth's magnetic field, already staring down an army of evidence and no backup behind them, just flew right out the window. Welcome to the field of catastrophism. Citation hunters who emailed yesterday, I will be getting back to you in a few hours here today, so eyes open for that email later tonight. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.